Let's take a look at old me beginning his journey into game development and then burst his bubble. I want us to look at my expectations and how realistic they were. I had both art and programming experience, but I hadn't really done any game development before. I want to make something like a six hour long metroidvania and I wanted to be finished within three years, doing this part time. Is this realistic? Well, we can actually find out. And this is something that I think everyone should do. Suppose we on an average week have 20 hours to spend on making this game. So three years, 20 hours a week. That is 156 weeks and there are on 3000 hours to make this game. As an inexperienced game developer, we basically know that for any game that we make, we need to have some art. And then we have to do some programming and we obviously want our game to be fun. So we need to do some game design and figure out a nice game loop. Oh, and then we can't forget the random stuff such as story, marketing, sound effects and music. And we don't really know anything about how long this stuff takes. But at smaller studios, usually have a programmer, an artist and maybe a game designer. So in order to make a game, we'll just assume that these probably take roughly equal amounts of time. So how much time do we have to make our nice beautiful art? Well, 3000 divided by four, we have 750 hours. Great, that's lots of time, right? Now in each of these fields, there will be a lot of smaller tasks that need to be accomplished. And if we look at them, we can get a better sense of whether we actually need 750 hours or not. But this is a channel dedicated to game art, so we're only going to look at the art section and see if 750 hours is enough. First of all, what does it mean to make a 6 hour long game? Well, I finished Ori and the Blind Forest in 6 hours, and that game has about 6 biomes. And we kind of want 6 bosses perhaps. And then let's assume in each biome we want 5 enemies. And so for each biome we maybe need 50 assets or something like that. So how much do we actually need to draw? Well 6 times 50, we need 300 assets. And then for our 6 bosses we need 6 cool designs and then maybe 6 times 30 animation frames. So 180 frames for these bosses. For enemies, it's a similar calculation. That's 30 simple designs. And then maybe each enemy has something like 15 frames. We end up with 550 frames. Then we have lots of UI and HUDs. And maybe you have no idea how much this entails. And once again, we can look at other games and maybe even count. One, two, three, four. Or we can just be lazy and make a ballpark guess of around 50 UI elements. Okay, is this it? Sadly not. We still need all our VFX type of things. Particle effects. Maybe some water. Environment animations. And then we also need to find the time to stitch all of it. And so for each of these biomes, maybe we need something like 14 rooms that need to be designed using our assets. Okay, now we know how much we need to do, but how long does it take? Well, let's just make our best guess. Let's say we try to make every asset in around an hour. So perhaps we have simpler assets that only take 10 minutes, but also some more complex assets that take two hours. So on average, we have one hour per asset. Generally, you probably shouldn't guess this part. Instead, it's better to actually record or time how long your assets take to make. In my case, it generally does take an hour. That means that we on average need to spend 300 hours drawing, but we still have a lot more things to draw. For the bosses, we're going to need cool designs and quite a number of animation frames. Let's assume that each boss takes 10 hours to make. Depending on your style, this could be generous. For enemies, they will be simpler. Maybe we have some critters with very few animations and simple designs, but also some more complex designs with attack frames and jump frames. So we can assume on average, five hours. So we have 30 enemies, each take five hours, that's 150 hours. For UI and HUD elements, we can just assume that each element might take less than an hour. But then we also have maps and stuff that might be more complex. And integrating the design of the HUD will be annoying. So just assume that 50 UI elements take 50 hours. Particle effects, environment animations, and VFX. We don't know how much of it we're going to need, so let's just say 50 hours. So lastly, we know we need to stage each room in game. It might be tricky to know how long this will take before you have started, but in my experience it generally takes a while. So I think we should assume around 4 hours per room. 15 rooms, 4 hours per room, in 6 biomes. That's 360 hours. And now we just add it all up. 300 plus 60 plus 150 plus 50 plus 50 plus 360. That's 970 hours. And that is significantly more than 750. Frankly, you might think that this estimation is bad, but you have to consider that we made this estimate with a lot of stuff where we just guessed. And even for some of the estimations, we might have even made an optimistic guess. Will we really only have 300 assets in a game? Generally, we probably want to avoid these optimistic guesses as much as possible. But how? Well, we have our things like drawing assets. We have done this. We know how long it takes us. In my case, I have literal recordings of almost all my assets. So I know it takes about an hour. Call this a known known. We know we need to do it and we know how long it takes. Then we have stuff that we know we need to do, but we have never done before, so we don't actually know how long it takes. We call this a known unknown. This might be things such as making and animating bosses. A known unknown is something where you know it needs to be done, but you can't make a correct estimate of time. And if we look at this, we can see that we're missing something. We have known knowns, known unknowns, but then we have this stuff that we don't know that we don't know. 
unknown unknowns. And projects generally have a lot of these types of things, especially for things you have never done before. Inevitably, one of these will pop up and ruin your week. Have fun. So these are the things where you don't know it needs to be done and you can't estimate how big of an issue it will be. So how do we deal with this lack of information? We obviously can't figure it out because we don't know about it. Researching might help, but it will only get you so far. What can be generally good here is if we just add some overhead. If we can't figure out the time, we just add something like 200 hours and hope that's enough. If you're completely new to all factors of art, you also end up redoing stuff, figuring out the style, experimenting, stuff that will never see the light of day, but still needs to be done. And we probably need to add another 100 hours of doing this. And we have at this point made a somewhat visual estimate because we have only accounted for the act of doing it, but there is a whole world between doing it and doing it well. And if you want to do it well, you generally have to add time for polish. This goes for both art, programming, and game design. But I don't want to just be a bummer. Let's just see what options we have overall. Let's take a look and see what we can do to make sure that we have enough time. We want a good return on our investment. If we reduce the time it takes to make UI by 10%, that is only 5 hours. Whereas if we reduce the time we spend on drawing assets by 10%, that is 30 hours. So how can we reduce the time it takes to draw? Well, once again, we can look at what we spend the most amount of time on when drawing, and then reducing the time we spend on those things. Some of the things that take an immense amount of time are using references, texturing and shading, complex details and shapes, and then redrawing the same stroke several times. So the way I personally figured out how to reduce the time spent drawing was to use as few references as possible for a majority of the stuff I draw. Not everything, because if I never used references, then I draw stuff that is so ugly looking that I can't use it anyway. But for bushes and trees, I have simplified to the extent that I can get something that is passable. That is why you see my trees not really looking realistic, but they still look okay. I also avoid texturing and shading. I do quick passes with a texture brush, that at most takes a minute. But any texture we have to sit in detail like I did here with doing gritty dotted lines to make it look nice, it simply takes too much time, so I don't do it. I also ensure that I use the brush that gets me decent results quickly. I just apply one clean stroke, and that generally makes me happy with the results. Lastly, I always use full opacity on my brushes, because if you have lower opacity, you end up redrawing the same strokes over and over, which might not seem like such a waste of time when doing it, but it essentially means you're repainting your painting five times over. So how do you find a way to use these methods to draw simple but still nice looking stuff? Well, there are plenty of artists that actually can do this, so we learn from them. We have children's books artists, illustrators, and doodle artists, and they all tend to be great at finding ways to simplify shapes and processes, but in a way that makes us still like it. This takes time in and out of itself, I just want you to kind of consider whether the style you actually have is something you can do fast enough given the time constraints you have. Because I make this point time and time again. I don't personally think there are many games out there that don't have these limitations. Ori looks great, but it was drawn with a team of artists. Tales of Iron as well. So when realities come into it, we have to accept the fact that our game will most likely end up having a moderately simple style or be made using pixel art, because that is what we have out there. Now, I'm not saying you should take my word for it with any of this. Look at the time you have to spend, look at the games you might be interested to emulate, how many assets are they actually using. Look at how much time it takes for you to do something and be honest. Just adjust the numbers to cater to your own circumstances. This subject is way more complex than I've actually presented, but I think it can be overdone as well. You probably don't want to sit in, optimize and calculate and handle this as a project management course. Getting a basic estimate of what you want to accomplish and when you want to be done is important. And this basic calculation for how many assets do I need to make and how much time do I have to spend doesn't take long, but it still gives you a really quick ballpark if you're being reasonable. And here we only dealt with the time breakdown of the art, but you can do similar estimates for game design and programming and see if you actually need those 750 hours. The truth is that most projects fail completely or go over budget. Um, for these types of solo projects, I think the conditions are actually worse. Quite a few game developers probably have 5 or 10 unfinished projects in their back catalog. And I'm sorry for kind of tricking you into watching a project management video. But I haven't been able to do game dev for two months, and this is still kind of important. Thanks for watching. Bye.